everybody, welcome back. Shane back with here from Guitar at Work. Shane Simpson from Guitar Work, welcome back. Uh, excited as always about this one. Always a lot of requests for this. This is Simple Man by Leonard Skinner. And I want to thank you for coming back and uh, subscribing and all that happy YouTube stuff. Comments have meant a lot. Um, multiple requests for this one, for sure. Um, this one I think is important for your right hand. I don't think you're going to find the chords themselves too too tricky. The left hand, the uh, the we're going to do it like right hand stuff. We'd be using a pick for this. It's a really good detail song. So it's something you could sort of peck away at every day just to kind of calibrate your right hand. Really, really does wonders. We'll talk a little bit about proper technique maybe uh, to get your accuracy up for sure. Uh, I'm going to do this in standard tuning. Uh, notice no capo on there, and I will be using a pick for this. I uh, definitely go and grab. I'm referring to song sheet. A song sheet here. Uh, you can go to Patreon.com slash guitar at work and grab that. Important you have that to follow along with. I'll be referring to that the whole time. It's got the chords in there. It's got the picking patterns as well, as well as whether to pick down and up and all that good stuff as well. So I'll be looking at it here, my trusty iPad. Um, we start out uh, with basically, it's, it's called a pickup. I'm going to play the open A string. Just going to play the open A. You'll see a zero written on your sheet. And then I'm going to go to the second fret of that same string. There we go. So two notes so far, a zero and then the second fret of the A string. And notice I'm using my second finger for that. That's probably a good idea. There we go. Now that's called the pickup. It kind of precedes the, the main riff. So this is the main riff we're doing here. Uh, zero two, and then I'm gonna land a C chord. Boom, there's my C, and we'll be sitting on him for a little while. It's all gonna be in the right hand. Once you've got that static shape, just stay in your garden variety C shape we all know and love. And I'm going to start with, you'll see the dots written there. Of course, you know how to read that where the, there's six lines and each one of those lines is a string. The, the bottom line is the thickest string. So it looks kind of upside down if you're new to this, but it's so that pitch ascends and descends properly on paper. Piece of cake, you'll get used to it. Um, but starting on that C, there we go. So A string, I'm going to pick that guy. Now as to whether to pick down up, I've written the down ups in there. Um, but uh, how about when you're first trying to memorize the sequence, do it all downs, do it all ups, like whatever you're comfortable with until you memorize the sequence and then maybe take a peek at those downs and ups. Don't let that bog you down too much in the beginning. We just want to get the sequence going. So I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So here is that C chord again, A string. And notice it's jumping now to the G string. And back to the D string. And A string again. There's your first four notes. Let's do those together again. Here's your staying on a C, A string, G string, here's your D string, and A string. Uh, now notice there's lots of schools of thought on this. Um, I'm a firm believer in resting what I'll call the heel of my right hand here. That little bone part right there, I'm resting it on those bottom two pins there that are holding in the E and the A string. Just, just give me a point of reference. Otherwise, I would forever have to look. I would trip all over myself. I would miss strings and all that. So you may find if you rest in the same place every time, you won't have to look for very much longer. You just kind of know where you are whether you're sitting or standing, whatever the case may be. So keep an eye on that. Some people rest their pinky. Uh, I know some amazing players that rest their pinky. It never really worked for me and I, I limited my dynamics. So anyway, try, try it your way, but I recommend that, uh, that heel rest in there. Here are your first four notes again. Back to C, here we go. G string, D string, and A string again. And now the sec second set of four in that first bar, we've got the B string, the G string, the D string, and then back to the G string. Now that's a lot to swallow. So here's the whole thing very slowly. I'm not doing the pickup. I'm just sitting on the C. Here's A string, G string, D string, A string, way up now. B string, G string, D string, and G string to end it. There we go. And in time, go. That's an important pattern. You probably want to stop tape right there. If you get that going on, you've got a lot of the song already. It's just going to change chords and the sequence will slightly change in the next bar. It's going to be the same, but everything's going to be one string thicker. So once you know that first one, don't move on until you know that. So here's our C again. Good, so you should have that going on. I'm going to jump to a G. Uh, you can play G multitude of ways. You could do the four finger G, or I call this the big kids G. I'm going to run to that. It's fun. It's easier to get to from the C, a little quicker anyway. I'm going to run to that. And now it is the same sequence, except everything is one string thicker. So that might make it easier to memorize. Uh, it's the same sequence. Everything is one string thicker than that C chord was. So here's my G. And I'm going to play the low E, then the D string, 
then the A string, then low E again, and here's my G string, D, A, and back to the D to end it. And so same as that C was, but everything is one string thicker, right? So in time. That's bar two. Uh, so we've got C and G. Here's your C. I'll go back to bar one here. I'll do the pickup too. Here's zero, two. C. G. And I really want to point out, um, if you happen to hit the wrong string, okay, it's not going to be a bad sound. It may be, it's not exactly what they did, but just keep cruising straight through. It's not worth stopping, not worth trying to correct it. It's still going to be a good sound because you've got a chord down here, right? It just may not be exactly uh, what, what you were hoping for, but that's okay. Your, your uh, accuracy will get better as you move along. Um, it's important to be able to play through these little bumps that we all have in there. It'd be hard to play this. You're going to end up playing it, you know, however many dozen times through the song, and you're going to miss a string here or there, okay? Anybody would. Um, now, the A minor, bar three, the A minor, the beautiful thing is you already know the pattern in the right hand for this. So I've got an A minor down here in the left hand, and exactly the same as bar one, the C chord, exactly the same right hand pattern. So A string, G string, D string, A, and then I'm going to go to the, hot, the B, G, D, and G. Exactly the same as that C was. Let's do it again slowly. Here's your A string, G, D, A, B, G, D, and G to end it. There we go. Um, that's it. So that's the same as that first bar was. Again, stop tape there, get that going. You don't have to play it as fast as the recording. It's really important to play it slowly. Uh, a side benefit from this, maybe you're, if you're on that C chord, when you strum a C chord, you may not notice that maybe that string is dead, like you're muting it by mistake. Okay? You didn't even notice because you're not singling that string out. But when you're doing this kind of flat picking, we call it, you're going to find out, oh, that string's dead. You're going to find out in a hurry because it's going to, like, obviously, because you're singling him out. Right? Uh, the very last bar, it says A minor 7th on your sheet. Again, grab that sheet from patreon.com slash guitar at work. Here's an A minor. Again, it says A minor 7. At the very last uh, little bit, I'm going to end up putting the pinky on. So I'm going to start out with regular A minor in bar 4. A regular A minor. A string. B string. G string. D string. Here's your first four notes, just on a regular A minor. Now, here I've circled this with the red, and I'm going to put a pinky on the third fret of that high E. There we go, third fret of the high E string. I'm going to go get him with the pick. High E, and then back to the B string. So here is bar four so far. I'm going to go back to a regular A minor. A string, B string, G string, D string, high E, putting that pinky on. And there's your B string. And then you're going to see a zero two. That's your pickup again. Zero, two, and then you're right back to the top, the C. Right? So it's the double bar line at the very beginning, so you don't play the zero two twice, it's at the end of bar four that you play that. So it's just this. C. G. A minor. A minor again. Pinky's going on right here. And there's that zero two. Often I call that a walk up. The walk up, you'll do it in a million songs. It's pretty standard when you go into C chord to get that going. Hey, so that's your main riff. Go round and round and round. Now there's a couple of guitars in there crisscrossing. This just seems to me to be the most prominent one. Um, there's some, again, another guitar, at least another one more guitar in there, uh, maybe several. Uh, and they're crisscrossing. Sometimes they put that pinky on at a different time. Doesn't matter. Stick with that first one and you can do variations as you see fit. Um, so round and round, that continues to the entire song. Uh, in between verses, looking here, in between verses, you're, I've written on your sheet electric guitar. There's a big distorted electric guitar that comes in in between verses and he does this. Big band. And that. Let's take that apart slowly. So here's your walk up again, but I'm going to use different fingers. Zero, two, using the same finger. And now third fret, still using that first finger there. Again, zero, two, and here's your third fret. 
just dragging him up. And the reason I'm using that same finger is because I'm going to need that third finger. Um, that's the three you're seeing, zero, two, three. Now, there's a five. There's a five in there that is, it's got a little whoop, little uh, swoop thing going on. It says B and R. That means bend and release. So I'm going to take that. I got my first finger on the third fret. I got my third finger on the fifth fret on the same string. This gives you a little extra strength. Bending on an acoustic is not easy to do because the strings are a lot thicker than the electric typically. So I'm going to take that fifth fret, tug it down toward the floor. I'm going to tug it down toward the floor. If you go up, you're going to run out of state, a space maybe. So, and I'm trying to bend that guy to that note right there. There we go. And the release means to let the bend go. But notice it still rings, right? And then back to the three. And finally at three on the low E. Go. Let's do that again. Slowly. Bar one of the electric guitar. Zero. Two. Here's your three. Third fret. Now third finger is going to get in there. Give that a tug. And release. Back to the three. Bar two of that electric guitar is the third fret of the low E. And then they're going back to the bend. Release. And then back to the third fret on the A string. Finally ending it on the fifth fret of the eight, low E, sorry, there we go. Here's what you have so far, top of the electric guitar part. Zero, two, three, as your bend, release. Three on the low E. There we go, we're on this third bar there. It says A minor in brackets because that's the implied chord. You don't have to play it. Somebody else is doing that for you. Zero, three, zero and I'm going to slide from three to five okay so the bars three and four of the electric guitar part five zero three zero and then three to five slide and at the very end of that before it repeats you've got zero two and it repeats from there here's your three bending release there we go bend again go repeat that um, now you if you're just one person around a campfire you may not play that because the bottom falls out you've got nobody going to, to glue it all together so but if you have someone else that's playing with you then hey it's really cool to add that in between it's a bit of detail in there for you for sure uh, we'll get to a straight strumming thing on this too so that just so if you're looking to just just pound out the chords um, the only other item of concern here would be the chorus he's gonna go to power chords if power chords are new to you you definitely have to know them it's the same darn shape you just drag them all over the place you're gonna see an 8 and a 10 there 8 and 10 written in the chorus um, power chords have taken on the name 5 so this is a C5 that's sort of internet speak for power chords so there we go I'm on the 8th fret of the low E and I'm on the 10th fret of the A that shape universal shape you definitely want that now you can only hit those two strings you don't want to be hitting anything else so I'm gonna put my right hand here and I'm gonna get a little bit of a mute there we go there we go so it's got that rocky kind of a flavor and it kind of helps to stop me from overshooting and getting extra strings you don't want those extra strings there we go and it's the same shape gonna be dragging around so I'm gonna hit him once see hit him again I'm gonna take that same shape and drag him down to the third fret there we go and hit him again that's a G up two frets is an A. There we go. Let's do that again. Here's a C, eighth fret. Same shape. Hit him again. There's a G, third fret. And going up to the fifth fret is an A. Now I'm going to take that at the very end here. I'm going to take that same shape, drag him back down to G here. And I'm going to go zero. On the low E, pick him individually. Third fret of the low E. And then open again and back to the A. I like to keep that ring finger there because I'm just going back to that same shape anyway. You just drag them around. Here's your chorus again. Here's a C5. Hit him again. G, third fret. And here's an A5. Here's your little walkie. Two, three, four. C, G, and A. Here we go. Uh, you could now you could abandon ship when, if, if you've been doing this the whole time and trying to sing it through with people. You could abandon that for the chorus and bow, 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 bow. It um, it's still to me if you're just one person, it's still the bottom kind of falls out when you're not hearing this. But uh, hey, if you're and what you might do is I'm mean, instead of just hitting it once, hitting it once again. Maybe if I went one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three 
that keeps the eighth note alive, which just keeps the rhythm going. And then you go back to in that part there. Right there. Uh, yeah, so that, those are all of your parts. If you're just looking for a campfire strum, or how about this, if you have a buddy that plays, um, you could be doing the fancy part. And he or she could be going, let's say, uh, C, I'm just gonna strum this. One, two, and three, four, and G. One, two, and three. Here's an A minor, and then one, two, and three, four, and one. I'm not even gonna put the, uh, the pinky on for the A minor seven because person who's playing the fancy part has got that already covered. So if we're counting that, I'm going to go one, two, and three, four, and as you can see, that is down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. There's a G there, A minor, down. A minor gets twice, right? Down, down, up, down, down, up, C, down, down, up, down, G, down, down, up, down, A minor. cool to have that going on if you have a friend playing that and while you're doing this stuff here it really fills up yeah and also if you're if you're playing it just by yourself again around the campfire maybe you would start it with the main riff and then maybe hey maybe during the verses you might go to a strum to sing it just to give that that main riff a bit of a breather and have a little bit of a contrast in there now we're trying to capture multiple guitars with just one little guitar here so hey, uh, a great request. So I want to thank you again for coming back and all your thumbs up have helped so much. It's so important in YouTube land. I really appreciate that. If you subscribe and hit that little bell notification, it'll tell you when new videos are coming coming around. I've got lots coming down the pipe and thank you for your uh, continuing requests and comments. It is always so great to hear from all of you. And um, I hope you have a, a great rest of summer and uh, I'll be seeing you again very, very soon. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.